This is how to stay secure as a cybersecurity professional. I do think that right off the bat, one of the biggest mistakes that beginners make going into a cybersecurity career is not having the best cybersecurity hygiene. So firstly, we're going to be covering the basics. Do you have multi-factor authentication turned on for all your accounts, especially the important ones? And even better, do you have pass keys set for those important accounts if you have the option to? I personally do believe that the future of password management is basically going passwordless. So if you have the option to use a pass key for any account, highly recommend it. It is a lot more secure than a typical password because it uses your device to authenticate. Next up, never connect to public Wi-Fi networks. Always use a VPN if you're browsing on an unsecure network. Hopefully you never are, but in general, it's good hygiene to use a VPN. A lot of companies will have internal VPNs where you can only access certain information for the company using their VPN. And who's to say that your personal information is not as important? VPNs will hide your network traffic from anyone who's snooping around. If you've ever used a public Wi-Fi at a cafe or at at a hotel or even at the airport. That is the worst place to do that, by the way. There's always gonna be someone looking through your network packets and any internet browsing that you're doing if you're in a very public space like a hotel lobby or an airport lounge. Personally, when I go traveling, I always have a portable Wi-Fi with me and I use a MiFi. It's basically a small device that I carry with me along with my laptop and other electronics. So if my cell service is not working, I'll switch over to the MiFi. And I always recommend when you have portable Wi-Fi or portable networks that you're using or even a portable router that you're using, you should try to use a service that is different from your phone. For example, if I use one cell service for my phone, then I'll use another internet service for my portable Wi-Fi. Just so you have a bit more coverage, just in case you're in an area where certain carriers have better connection than others. Number three, are you using a password manager? And if not, you really should be. I personally always recommend this. It makes it so much easier to have all your passwords in one place across devices. You'll never have to deal with the logging in from your laptop, but you don't have the password saved on your browser. So you end up having to go to your phone where the password may be saved. And it's just a lot of hassle having to go back and forth. So I always recommend getting a password manager. Most password managers will typically auto-generate you strong passwords. They'll change passwords for you. Really good ones will also tell you if your password was found in a recent data breach. And you never have to worry about reusing the same password passwords over and over again, because that is one of the biggest ways that people get multiple accounts hacked. When a hacker gets one of their passwords, they end up being able to log into their bank accounts, their emails, their socials, and anything else that you're using the same password for. Save yourself the headache, and it's a lot easier to get a password manager to manage all of that for you. And number four in cybersecurity hygiene is to never click on unsolicited links. Anything that you're getting via text or email from an unknown email or number, typically I'll just report it as spam if I'm not expecting it. You've probably already seen the text where people will send you a notification that your UPS package needs to be delivered or your FedEx package. Don't fall for those. Those are almost always fake. And if you want to check any packages that you are receiving, just use your tracking link directly on the website itself. No need to click on a random text that is sent by USPS or FedEx. And of course, don't fall for any online scams, like having to sell someone money to send money back to them, helping someone buy gift cards. This was actually a very big scam at one of my previous jobs, actually, where I guess somehow the information of a few of our team members had been leaked publicly and they knew the name of our CEO and they would send texts acting as if they were the CEO, asking them to buy gift cards and sending them the codes. This was never something I thought was something that people actually do, but this was very, very targeted phishing. So there are things that you need to look out for even when working for a company because it can be sent to your personal numbers if they're out there. So you wanna make sure you're always staying alert no matter what you're doing, even if you're getting a text from the CEO asking you to send them gift card codes. This should always be validated and verified before you're sending anyone money online or through a virtual transaction. And this, my friend, leads us right into protecting your online privacy. Thank you to Proton Mail for sponsoring this video. So when it comes to your online privacy, your data is being collected, distributed, sold to anyone who is willing to buy it by data brokers online. And this is something that I wish more people knew about. And I'm sure all of us have gone through the experience where maybe we searched up snowboarding because we're considering it as a potential hobby and maybe looking for some gear that we might need. And guess what you're gonna see the next time you log into a big social media platform. That's right, ads for snowboarding gear or anything else targeted to the demographic of someone who is interested in snowboarding. And your search history is by no means private to anyone, which is why I recommend using tools to remove your information from data brokers. That is a really big one. I personally have also started doing that this year. This deletes things like your name, your address, your emails, your phone numbers, off of these data broker sites so that they're no longer selling your data 
to random companies and honestly anyone who is willing to bid for them. I'll also share the tool that I recommend that will automatically delete your personal information from data brokers for you, link in my description below. And speaking of data, this is another reason why you should consider using a privacy first platform like Proton. Proton puts your privacy first so you feel safe when you write emails, stream content, save passwords, or upload photos because what you do online is for your eyes only. In honor of Cybersecurity Awareness Month, I'm partnering with Proton Mail to help you take control of how your data is used online by de-googling your life and choosing Proton's suite of privacy-first products for only $1. And now you may be asking, but Sandra, why should I de-Google my life? In fact, many of us may be using Google's suite of tools for our personal lives, in school, for work. Well, to answer this question, first, let's go back to privacy basics. Google's business model is based on scraping your personal data from its many apps and services to be able to serve you targeted ads. This is one of the primary ways that Google generates revenue, and that includes what you search on Google, where you're going on Google Maps, and even the most recent email that you sent using Gmail. And because Google's business model revolves around targeted advertising, their revenue depends on the surveillance and the data mining of your personal data, and specifically how you use Google products on a day-to-day -day basis. Imagine this as basically constantly being watched while you're browsing your phone, while you're searching for things to buy, while you're Googling something about your personal health. There's really a lot that goes into this. And unlike Google who claims to be private, Proton's products are built with the highest privacy standards and do not collect any of your personal data to keep you safe from data breaches, ad targeting, and government surveillance. And not to mention that you can switch in just one click. Proton allows you to easily import your emails from your Google account to Proton's suite of privacy-first tools, including email, calendar, and drive. And honestly, anyone who has seen the articles on how Google is using our docs and data on Google Drive to train their AI models, that is already an insane breach of privacy that I would have never expected. And yet here we are, given the advancements in AI just in the last few years. By using Proton Mail, which I have also personally switched to, you can choose a private alternative to Gmail. Proton Mail comes with all the features you need to quickly manage your workflow, organize your inbox, and stay in touch with your contacts, all while keeping your email private and ad-free. And you can securely store documents and photos in Proton Drive and share them only with the people you choose to share them with. Okay, so with that, let's dive a little bit deeper into the features of Proton Mail and how you can use this to protect your privacy online. All right, so first off, why should you use Proton Mail? Proton was founded in Switzerland in 2014 when a team of scientists decided to build a better internet where privacy is the default. Fast forward, they launched Proton after a successful public crowdfunding campaign, and their first product was encrypted mail. They also have Proton V. VPN, Proton Drive, which is their encrypted file storage, and Proton Pass. Today, Proton has more than 100 million users worldwide. And because they operate from Switzerland, they also benefit from very robust privacy laws. And not to mention that the inventor of the World Wide Web is part of their board of directors, which is insane. Some of the benefits of using Proton Mail, outside of just the general benefits of switching over from Google to Proton, is specifically focused around your privacy, having control over your data, protection from data breaches, and preventing surveillance from prying eyes. And not to mention that it's an easy switch from most big email platforms out there, Proton has a migration tool that allows users to easily transfer emails, calendars, and contacts from Google or other providers with just a few clicks, as well as fish guard protection that offers advanced phishing protection and flags potential attacks to keep your inbox secure. This is perfect for anyone who gets random emails that are unsolicited. I personally can get tens to hundreds of emails per day. And this is personally one of my favorite features because I already know which emails have a red flag to keep an eye out for and not to click on those links or open those email attachments. And because Proton uses end-to-end -end encryption, not even Proton can access any of your data. And they also provide tracker blocking. This is a very interesting one. This is also one of my favorite features. And basically Proton Mail blocks invisible email trackers or pixels to prevent companies from spying on you and basically sending you targeted ads. There's basically software out there that is able to track whether or not a recipient of an email open to that email. And personally, I think that is a huge invasion of privacy. And the worst part is that this isn't always marked in the email as you know being tracked. And because Proton Mail blocks these tracking pixels, it's basically not even something you have to worry about when you're using their platform. Your email messages will never be made public from a data breach. Using Proton Mail, your private keys stay on your device, so no one, not even Proton, can decrypt your messages if their servers were compromised. And did I mention that you can switch over to Proton Mail for just $1 for your first month? 
This is a really, really good deal and I definitely recommend checking them out. Get Proton Unlimited for just $1 at proton.me slash with Sandra. All right, so that is it for this video. Let me know if you guys have any other questions in the comments below. If you have other ways of staying secure online or protecting your privacy online as a cybersecurity professional or honestly just as a person using the internet, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Also consider joining our Discord channel where we discuss all things cybersecurity, careers, interview prep, certifications, etc. Also feel free to connect on LinkedIn I post there on a weekly basis, so I'd love to see you there. Thank you again to Proton Mail for sponsoring today's video. If this video was helpful, please consider liking and subscribing as it really helps out the channel. I post videos weekly and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!